Hey everybody, about two years ago, as part of my do-it-yourself solar system, I installed this EVSE, commonly known as a car charger, to charge this Chevy Volt. Now I installed this about March of 2020. A year later, in April of 2021, I released this solar electric car charging video, right here on this YouTube channel. Well, since then, I've updated to this 2018 Nissan LEAF. It has a longer range because it also has a much larger battery. So in two years of using a solar charger to charge my vehicles, what have I learned? Well, you're about to find out. The amount of power that you need depends on how far you drive every day. I drive anywhere from 35 to 50 miles, which is right in the range of the national average of 40 miles. We need to know how many miles can you drive on one kilowatt hour. Electric vehicles range from 3 to over 5 miles per kilowatt hour. The average is 3.4. My Nissan LEAF comes in with an impressive 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour. So for every kilowatt hour of power, I can drive 4.4 miles. So let's take that 4.4 and make the math easy. We're going to multiply it by 10. So with 10 kilowatt hours of power, I can go 44 miles, which is a good average estimate of what I do on a daily basis. So my goal is to pull at least 10 kilowatt hours of power out of my solar system in a day. And I can always just charge off of the grid if the weather or my schedule is not cooperating that day. So I started out with about 2,000 watts of solar panels. I've since uh, more than doubled that. And now I've got about 4,800 watts. And since you never actually get the rated amount of power, I'm actually pulling down about 3,300 watts in the peak of the day. The DC power from the panels goes through this inverter and is turned into 120 volt, 3000 watts of AC. Um, I do plan on adding another unit and going split phase 240 volts in the future. And some of the power from the inverter is used to feed this Zencar EVSE, commonly known as a charger. So this is running at 120 volts, 16 amps. Now, one of the reasons that I bought this particular charger is that it would run on 120 volts or 240 volts. In fact, I have it set up so that I can switch over to the grid and power it at 240 volts at 16 amps. But for now, when I'm charging off of solar power, I'm still only charging at level one, which is very slow. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's considered a granny cord. So yesterday, I drove more than normal. I actually drove over 120 miles yesterday. So we're starting out with the battery at only 18% state of charge. Okay, and notice this gauge will estimate um, at different charging rates. And right now we're set for the 1.4 kilowatt charging rate. How long is it going to take to reach certain states of charge? And according to this, it's going to take nine hours to reach 50% state of charge and over 24 hours to reach 100% state of charge. That's estimated at 1.4 kilowatts, which is the 12 amp granny cord charging rate. Fortunately, the Zen car charges a little bit faster. It's at um, almost the full 16 amps. It's at 15.7 amps, which gives us 1.82 kilowatts instead of just the 1.4. And it's just after 9 o'clock in the morning. We've started charging. It is sort of a semi-cloudy day, so we'll see how that works out for us. And this is the online dashboard for the Victron Solar Chargers. It shows a, a kind of an overview of the entire system. This box is showing me I'm making uh, about 1,200, almost 1,300 watts from the solar panels. This box is showing us how much power is going out and currently almost 2,200 watts. That includes running the inverter, running some other circuits, and the 1,800 and some watts charging the car. And now it's about uh, 
few minutes after 12 o'clock noon and we've added about almost six kilowatt hours of power to the car and it's now about 20 minutes until four you can see our solar panels are putting out 3,000 watts but it varies and goes up and down all the way down to maybe 700 watts up to 3,000 depending on the cloud cover okay it's four o'clock in the afternoon we're gonna see how we did start her up and we got up to 55 percent and we've now got 90 miles that we can drive so comparing to this morning we started out with an 18 percent state of charge went up to 55 percent went from 29 miles to 90 so we added 61 miles not bad for a granny cord <laughs> if you're wondering what the extra uh mile is on the odometer i uh, unplugged for a few minutes and went down and got my mail and over on the zen car we can see we added a little more than 12 kilowatt hours so now we're going to go back to some footage from this morning before we charged um, and we're going to compare uh, some different charging rates so at the granny cord rate of 1.4 it would take nine hours to reach 50 percent charge uh, my Zen car did a little better than that, uh, actually 30% better because it charged at 1.8. So if we could charge at level 2 uh, at 3.6 kilowatts, which is 16 amps, we could actually hit a 75% charge here in just 6 hours or in a day's solar charge. Charging at 32 amps would give us 6.6 .6 kilowatts. Um, that charging rate we could fully charge the car in a day's solar you'd need a pretty big solar system for that but it could be done and this is for DC quick charging at 50 kilowatts not really a do-it-yourself project but at this rate you can charge the whole car up in just two hours it's not necessary to fully charge your battery every day as a matter of fact it's healthier for your battery to only charge to about 80 percent I normally do not go down to 18 percent before I start charging my normal day would be somewhere between 40 and 50 percent and I may charge it all the way up to 70 or 80 percent okay so let me tell you about this weird problem that I had last week normally you press this button to pop the cover you open the cover up and then when you put the plug into the charge port the car beeps once and then these three lights begin blinking um, they also show you the state of charge if the first light is blinking you're in the lower third of the state of charge of the battery the second light is between 33 and 66 percent and then the third light we see blinking right now means you're between 67 and 100 percent state of charge but here's what happened last saturday plug the car in like normal and instead of beeping once it did nothing and then three lights blinking three beeps what the heck is this well according to the manual it means you're connected incorrectly and I wasn't sure what was going on if there was a problem with the car but it actually was just with the plug this latch fits into a small hole in the charging plug of the car which locks it into place so it can't accidentally get unplugged also when this latch closes all the way there's a small switch inside of the plug that switch needs to close to talk to the charger and tell it it's locked in so it's okay to start charging okay so this latch needs to fit into this small hole right here but it's just not fitting in there all the way unless I force it right now push it in uh, and I really gotta push it up like that to get it to lock in okay and now it's charging okay so I think I dropped this thing and bent this little latch a little bit so I'm gonna grab it with some needle nose and I just bent it back up so it's kind of straight again cool you are you cleared are clear for takeoff take Okay, so there were a few important points here. How many miles per day do you drive?
How many miles per kilowatt hour does your electric vehicle get? For me, it ended up being that if I can get 10 to 15 kilowatt hours per day, that would give me my 40 to 45 miles that I normally drive. Of course, more energy than that would be wonderful. Uh, your mileage may vary, no pun intended. You have to determine for yourself what your needs are. All right, those Zen cars available again. It was not available last year when I did the review video, but this is the same one I've got. It's pretty cool. It's got the, um, the 620 plug for 240 volts, and it has the adapter that you can run 110 volts off of it. Uh, same display. You've got your switchable amps right here. Well, hold on a second. Jumping around here. 6, 8, 10, 12, or 16 amps. And they make this on a bunch of different configurations down here. This is 15 amp. Let me get on the right picture. This is the just for one uh, 120 volts right here. This is just got the NEMA 515 plug on it. Here's a back up to a level two for 240 volts. There's the 1030 plug, a 1450 plug. Let's check this one. This is a uh, 32 amp version. Yeah, you're not going to have an adapter with this, but uh, this is for if you're wanting to charge a little faster. This has got the nice 1450 plug on it with a neutral and a ground for 240 volts. And let me find the, there we go. The amps over here, 10 amps up to 32 amps. Pretty cool. So at 10 amps, this would give you 2.4 kilowatts of charging power. And all the way up at 32 amps, I think you're running about 6.6 .6 kilowatts of charging power. So pretty cool. And they even have one that goes up to 40 amps here. But this one right here is the one that, uh, that I picked up. I'll put an affiliate link down below if anybody's interested. You can click through on that. I do want to point out one negative thing that people have complained about is the plug on here is tighter than a regular 1772. It feels a little snug when you when you plug it in. I used it on my Volt, I used it on my Leaf, and I never really had an issue until I dropped it and bent that uh, latch. I showed you that earlier in the video, so uh, just want you to be aware of that, that some people complain it's too tight of a fit. So there you go. Uh, there's also, there's a lot of good chargers out there. Um, I'm not going to do links to all these, but I'm sure you're aware of a bunch of them, the charge points and clipper creeks and so forth. But there are a lot more money, super well-made uh, chargers, but but I think the Zincar seems to be a pretty good deal for the price point. Hey, if you find these videos useful, make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications.